Hey Stitchers, long time no speak. I thought I would do a video today to update you on my progress with Operation Threadborn, which I started January. So the first month's been and gone, so I thought I'd give you a little account of how I thought it went and that I'm actually very happy with my stitching so far this year, although it is only early days. But first of all, I'd just like to say a big thank you. Um, it seems that I've had a few new subscribers despite my hiatus on YouTube, so I'd just like to say hello and thank you to all of you. I can't believe that I've got like over 1,100 subscribers to my channel all about stitching, so um, a big thank you to all of you that continue to watch and um, encourage me in my stitching exploits. So, for the benefit of new subscribers and any of you that may have forgotten, what is Operation Threadborn? Well, Operation Threadborn is my own personal stitching challenge for this year that I set myself. And it came about, I did a, a, a little bit about it in a video back in August last year. But how it came about basically was, um, as I was doing videos about the different types of threads I have, silks and cottons and pearls, I realised how many hand dye threads I actually had. And I was a bit sad because I wasn't getting to use them as in my stitching as much as I wanted to. Um, because despite what some people might think, I do buy threads, but I also do like to use them. I just don't hoard them in the drawers behind me. So I, then I began to sort of question why that was. If, there was. if this was something that I wanted to do, I want to use these threads in, in different charts, why wasn't I doing it? And at the same time, I was watching um, Aish at Sticky Stitch, or in this case, her other channel, MS Goddess in Training, and Mackenzie at The Lovely Array, and they were posting videos um, as part of their makeup side of their channels to do with Project Pan, which was all about using products in their makeup stash and you know getting them out and using them until they're finished. And so I sort of took those two things and that's how I came up with Operation Threadborn as a way that I can use the threads in my stash that I desperately wanted to use. But the reason I came up with for why this wasn't happening was when I looked at the amount of stitching time I'd spent over the last few years. The majority of that time was spent stitching heaven and earth designs and chatelaines. So in three years I think I stitched um, seven small um, heaven and earth designs. Um, I think about seven, I don't know off the top of my head, but if you've seen my videos you've seen what I finished. And sort of similar number for chatelaines, two large ones and some medium and small ones. And as much as at the time I loved stitching those designs, um, I've got so many other designs in my stash that I desperately wanted to stitch and I felt that Chatelaine and Heaven and Earth designs were hogging my stitching time. So for 2015 I said back in August I will not stitch any Chatelaines in 2015 and I will not stitch any Heaven and Earth designs in 2015. Now as it happens that became a lot easier than I initially anticipated because towards the end of last year I finally figured out that I stitched enough heaven and earth designs and to be honest now I really can't see myself stitching any more heaven and earth designs and the designs of that type, those big um, you know full on cross stitch product projects. That's not because I don't I don't like the charts, um, I've stitched them so I like them when I did them. But my stitching's just moved on and they take a lot of time to do and as I think I said in my November video if I love the artwork that much, I'll just buy a print of it or, you know, postcard sizes, that type of thing. And that's what I plan to do this year. Um, because at the end of the day, it was the artwork that I loved, not necessarily the process of stitching the design in itself. So not stitching Heaven and Earth design for this year isn't going to be a problem because I can't see myself stitching one again. Chatelaines, on the other hand, are still one of my very, very favourite designs to stitch. And so I will... Um, miss stitching one this year as I've stitched for the last few years there's always been I've always stitched one or two a year but I've got plenty of other fun stuff that I'm really looking forward to stitching this year because I've allowed myself the freedom to stitch whatever I like this year um, all those designs I've looked at and thought oh I'd really love to stitch that but I can't find a place for it in my rotation and um, that's all gone out the window so I can stitch on whatever I like this year so what are my rules for Operation Threadborn? Well, there's not really any rules. Basically, the whole purpose of this is to use as many of my hand-dyed threads, 
silks, cottons and pearls in my stash as possible without using any duplicates. So I do find when I when I use my threads, I do have favourites, I have favourite colours, so I often lean to purple, pinks, that sort of thing. But this way, um, if I use a thread once, say the threads that I've used for my projects this month, I can no longer use for the rest of the year. I have got plenty of threads, I will not run out, so it won't be a problem. And it will also get me to think a bit more about my thread choices and try out new things and try new colours and colourways. So that's the point of it. So use as many threads as possible. Now that applies to everything I stitch this year. So any project, um, you know me by now, I swap out threads for ones that suit me and ones that I have in my stash. So I pay no attention to materials lists and that will be especially so this year. I'll just be digging out threads from my stash to stitch from. But as an extra special challenge, I have set myself the task every month to stitch at least one design from the whole plethora I have on my hard drive of the freebie designs um, that I've collected over the over the years that I've been stitching. So when I say freebie designs, I'm talking about those complimentary designs that designers give out on their websites, on Facebook maybe, um, just as a thank you to people that have been supporting their design work. I'm not talking about illegal charts that have been pirated and distributed so let's not get me on that subject so um, you might find if you decide to follow my progress on this little project throughout the year you might find some freebies yourself that you'd like to stitch perhaps introduce you to a new designer you've not heard of it is actually a good way the little freebie designs that designers have it's a good way to get you introduced to their work thinking specifically about chatelaines for example you can try a few of martina's freebie designs to see if they're the type of thing for you so, for Operation Threadporn, I'm going to pick at least one of the many freebie designs I have to stitch each month. And not only do I have to stitch it from stash, obviously, but I also have to finish it in some way, i.e. not just leave it as a piece of random needlework in a drawer to make it into something that I can display, so little pillows or flat folds, cushions. And as the year goes on, I hope to be a bit more inventive in the way I finish things. But, you know, I'm starting small in January. And the other project that I want to do as part of Operation Threadporn is I want to make sure that I stitch a little bit of hard hanger every month. I do have some hard hanger projects that I would like to stitch, bigger ones I'd like to stitch this year. But just to make sure I always have a bit of hard hanger, I want to complete um, Mabel Figworthy's Songs of the Weather stitch along, which she introduced back in 2013. I did the first two months January, February, and then somewhere along the line, it got lost. So I'm starting again. So each month I will stitch. I mean, they're only, I think, 75 stitches square. So they're only like three, three and a half inch pieces on 25 Camden Gardener. So they're very small, but they do contain each month builds up um, your skill level, I guess, in hard hanger with different filling stitches, different surface stitches. So there's a lot of new stitches that I will encounter, which pleases me. And also by making sure I've got hard hanger in my stitching each month it means that I should be able to work my way through my collection of um, hand dyed pearls so my Karen wildflowers water um, wildflowers watercolors that sort of thing so that should help with my thread form totals so the way I'm going to calculate operation thread form how much of a success it is you might remember at the end of my November video I mentioned that my sister was coming to stay and we basically inventoried all of my stash, all of my threads and my fabrics. So I now know, and so does she, the precise number of threads I have in my stash, which is slightly shocking. But how I'm going to measure my thread porn success is basically every month I will count up the number of different threads I've used. And I work out the percentage of my stash that I've used. Now the way I inventory my stash, um, I know a few people, quite a few stitches now, um, use like a cross stitch app. I've not really bothered with that, purely from the point of view that from the very beginning I've used an Excel spreadsheet to um, keep track of my stash. And to be honest, I've got quite, I've, I've got a lot of threads, but some of the threads that I've got are from manufacturers that are no longer producing hand dyed threads, or they're just sort of odd ones here and there. So it's actually a lot easier for me to keep track of it on a spreadsheet than it is and a cross-stitching app because they're not going to have all the threads 
um, thread brands that I have in my stash on an app and so it's just easier so I inventory on Excel which actually makes this type of thing easier because obviously now I've got a formula which will work out my percentages and everything that I've used so each month for my updates I'll tell you cumulatively how much of my stash I've used as the as I go on with this little challenge month by month so my aim really this year is to use between 12 to 15 percent of my hand dye thread stash now 12 to 15 percent probably doesn't sound a lot but then again you don't know exactly how many <laughs> skeins of thread I have in my stash the number is quite large so and it's sensible really you know there's 12 months in the year there's only so many hand dye threads you can use in each project only so many projects you can stitch in a year um, because you know I'm not just going to stitch like tiny little projects just for the sake of saying oh yeah I've used up all these threads I'm still going to be stitching on projects that I want to stitch but I'm just going to be using the threads in my stash to do it so bearing all that in mind the other reason why I chose to use a percentage to chart my progress is that obviously it means the more threads I buy, the more threads I will have to use in order to keep my percentage going up. Obviously, if I buy in loads of thread, that's going to raise up the amount I need to use to reach that 12 to 15%. So that's another sort of little tactic that my sister came up with as a way of getting me to focus on the threads that I have rather than having my eye caught by new threads and things like that. So where does this leave me? And when it comes to purchasing stash well I'll still be purchasing stash but my stash will be taking a different direction I've always had a stash budget so every month I have a, I allow myself a certain amount of money to spend on stash should I choose to do so invariably lately it's been spent on random threads but this year in a somewhat interesting twist my sister is in charge of my stash budget which might horrify some of you the thought that somebody else is, con is in control of you know what I have allow myself to have but actually I think it's going to work out quite well it's already worked out quite well so I've got a wish list of things and she knows the things that I want and it's making sure that I buy the things that I've, I want rather than just randomly randomly buying things um, there's been several things that I've wanted and that I haven't bought because I've been able to buy more threads for the same amount of money or something stupid like that. So this year my stash budget is about using, spending it wisely um, in a way that advances my stitching, let's put it that way. Yeah, so my sister's in charge of my stash budget, which means that she can obviously veto purchases made, or no, not purchases made, but purchases I wish to make. So just to give you an idea of um, my sister and what she's like, I think yesterday I emailed her because she lives 30 miles or so away from me in another town. So I emailed her yesterday to um, ask permission because um, I decided what I wanted to put some of my stash money towards Feb for February. So I emailed her to ask, um, you know, can I buy these things? Is it sensible? She's more sen Well, she's not more sensible than me. We are sensible in our own ways, but she's very well aware of um, that I'm a collector. She isn't, so she finds it quite easy not to have whole sets of things and different things like that. So it's actually quite good having her sort of say, well, actually, instead of buying these random threads, wouldn't you rather buy this thing that you've been after for like months and months and months? So she's sensible in that way. I'm not sensible when it comes to threads, as you know. Anyway, so I emailed her yesterday and said, look, these are things I want to buy. Can I buy them? So now I'm going to email you her reply so that you have a taste of, of my sister. She says, Dear Thread Hoarding Addict, Many thanks for contacting me with your request. You may indeed purchase all those things, see how generous I am, and I especially approve of the books. However, I would say that for March and April you are not allowed to buy any random extra threads on top of your subscription, so my Jodery Clubs, unless they are for specific projects on your pre-listed to-do column. You have plenty of threads and I think stash money would be better spent on nice finishing fabrics and materials. I feel a hard detox is the only way to break the thread hoarding cycle. 
As part of this therapy, should you feel a relapse coming on, I would prescribe Aaron, that's my husband, to pick five skeins from the drawers at random, seal them in a jiffy bag and place in your post box. Then you can still experience the rush of opening packages, admiring the thread and putting it away without adding to your stash. With fondest wishes, your THA sponsor. So although to some of you my sister might sound quite harsh, actually, this is a good thing. And I think she's right. March and April, I, I would like to top up my fabric stash and a few other different things I've got in the pipeline. And I'd much rather spend my stash money on that than random threads because I have plenty of random threads. However, for January, she was you know, quite generous with her because she did let me purchase some new threads. So I thought very quickly I would show them to you because after all, this is a thread porn video, so you need to see some thread porn. So, obviously I got my Jodry monthlies, I might talk about them a bit in a minute, but I decided that I would very, very much like to buy some new silks from Fibalicious. Now I know um, a few of you are already customers of Fibalicious, but in December, very, very, very kindly, the lovely lady behind Fibalicious, whose name is beautiful, but I cannot say it, my terrible English tongue can't say it, so for the purpose of, of this video, I emailed her and I said, how, how do you pronounce your name? I really want to pronounce it correctly, because it's nice to get people's names right. And she laughed via messenger and said, I don't even think my husband can say my name quite correctly. So she said I could, a lot of her friends and people on Facebook refer to her as Gwen, which is probably the closest an English person can get to saying, pronouncing her name correctly. So for the purpose of this video, I hope she doesn't mind. She said I could. I could call her Gwen. But you know who I'm referring to if you're a fan of Fibalicious, if you follow her on Facebook, um, our Facebook group, if you follow her on Instagram, you'll know who I mean. Anyway, I've always admired, I did, I've admired her stitching for years. She's a fantastic stitcher. But I absolutely love the look of her silks and I was going to get round to um, getting some at some point. But anyway, she very, very kindly sent me some of her lovely silk threads to try out uh, in December. And it's not really an exaggeration to say that when I opened the packet and the envelope that contained them, I was just, I think I actually might have had a little gasp when I opened them. I was going to say something else then, but I better not get in trouble. Because when I, when I looked, I hadn't even touched them at that point. I just looked at them in, in, in the packet and I just knew by looking at them exact, that they are exactly the type of silk that I love stitching with. One of the reasons I like to stitch with silk um, is that it's every brand of silk really is different. Even if they're all spun silks, um, they stitch up differently, they feel differently, each brand has, is, is just slightly different and that what, that's what makes stitching with silk more interesting, I think, than stitching with cotton. Because with co cotton's cotton basically, it's either like DMC, mercerised, or it's not. But somehow, silk, despite, you, you know, there's just different, I'm not going to go into it, but you know, there's different types and different ways that it's spun, obviously. Each silk worm is obviously very different to another, so that's depending on the way the silk is processed, depending on how it stitches. I like quite um, a tight, um, a tightly twisted silk. Um, some silks are softer than others to stitch with. So when I saw these silks, I just thought, oh, awesome! I just, I just knew I would love stitching with them. Now I have stitched with them. Nothing that I can show you because I changed my mind on the colourway that I was using, but they are absolutely beautiful, beautiful to stitch with, and the colours are amazing. Oh, I've just mucked up this skein now, I was going to open it and show it to you. But one of the good things about um, Fibrilicious silks is that, in a similar way to Threadpicker's silks, they come as individual strands, 50 individual strands, rather than... Um, like six stranded, eight meters off, six, six stranded. So you don't have to faff about wondering about where's the best place to cut the skein so that you get the best variegation of the color. So oh, let's just open up a new one. I've mucked this one up now somehow. 
yeah, so these are the ones I purchased with my sister's permission, I'd like to add. Some lovely autumn colours. And she did say I wasn't allowed to have any purple threads, but I managed to sneak one past her and she said because it was so pretty, she'd allow me to use it. So these were the ones that I got. Oh, let's do it this way. That one's Quiet Stone. This is the one she she kindly let me have. This one's Orchid Orgy. And then there's Fall Storm. Storm Brewing. And this one's beautiful, Fallen Leaf. So they come, as it says in the packet, it's 50 single strands, total length 60 metres. So let's open one up so you can see what I mean. So actually, having your silk this way is good, because one thing that annoys me about, um, yeah, so look, you can see that it's made up of individual, a skein is made up of individual strands, it's not, you know, metres of six stranded or twelve stranded silk but one of the advantages having your silk this way is if you use different um a different number of strands in your stitching so for example in a six stranded silk i might use i might be doing some speciality stitches so for, for one instance of using that silk i might use three strands of silk in my needle and then i might go back to doing cross stitch and use two strands of silk in my needle so I've used five strands, which leaves me one single strand left over, which then won't match up to any of the variegations in successive um, cuts, lengths of silk, you see what I mean? Whereas when you buy your silk like this, when it's in several, you know, you've got 50, did I say, yeah, 50 strands of silk, all with the same variegation, doesn't matter how many strands you use, none, none go to waste. So I think having silk like this, is an advantage because it's less wasteful I think in my opinion yeah so they are oh such beautiful silks to handle and to stitch with really really pretty I can't say enough good things about them beautiful to stitch with um, I think they cost I bought these in the sale so I think in the new year sale but I think ordinarily they're four dollars a skein which is a lot of silk for your money I think, I do think with silk, you get what you pay for, and these are, are are worth every every dollar. Silks do vary in price, um, but generally, the more you pay, the better the silk is. But again, it's all down to personal personal taste, really. We all have our little foibles, what we like and what we don't like, and I'm very sort of, get me straight in, I'm very sort of... Um, I'm not picky necessarily, but I know what I like, so, and that's what I buy. I'll try anything once, um, but I, I still have my, you know, I have my favourites, the silks I love to stitch with. So I just thought I'd give a little shout out to Fibrilicious. I know a lot of you already buy um, beautiful silks from Gwen. Obviously she does cottons as well, um, but you know me, I'm a silk fiend, so I'm sort of, when I buy threads, I'm more inclined to buy silks nowadays than I am cottons. So those are those. I should deal with them later. Yes, yeah, so Vibalicious. So I chose to use my stash money um, for those this month because they were uh, a thread that I didn't have in my stash and when I buy threads, if and when I buy threads this year, I would like them to come from, apart from my Jodries, which I get obviously every month, um, I like them to come from dyers that I don't have in my stash so far. So Fibrilicious was one that I hadn't got around to purchasing from. So um, that's why I chose Fibrilicious Silks to spend my money on this month. Um, the other stash, obviously I've got my Jodery threads, which you all know. But I just thought I would show you, because I, I have no idea what I'm going to stitch on this. But it's a beautiful piece of fabric. The limited edition, which you can no longer buy, obviously, because it's a January one. Winter Sunset. This month I decided, oh no, I didn't decide. Well, I kind of did, I suppose. Um, Michelle was low on 28 Count Brittany, um, and I, Brittany Opal, and Brittany, I think, possibly. I can't remember. Anyway, I always have um, Brittany Opal for my fabric of the month, and she didn't really have any. Um, it was either wait until she got more in, or choose an alternative fabric. So I thought, oh, just for a change, I'll get my fabric in um, Opal. Cashel instead, 28 count April Cashel, and that's what I did. So this is a piece of fabric, and it's really, really pretty. 
probably is not coming out quite right on the camera, it never does. But it was just beautiful, so... And then I thought, mm, do I want to switch my fabric to cash out? But this stuff would be, an, when I get to stitch on it, whatever I choose to stitch on it, will be a nightmare to stitch on, but whatever gets stitched on it will look beautiful at the end of it, so... There we go. So, now I've waffled on, what you actually came here to see was what I have stitched for Operation Threadporn this month. So, um, if you follow me on Instagram, you already know all this anyway. You would have seen my updates. I had meant not to put them up until I'd done a video, but it was just time was going on and I'm, I've not been very good with videos lately, so I just thought I'd put it up on Instagram first, but I will try not to ruin the surprise for my long-suffering YouTube watchers. So let's start off with the easiest. And that's um, Mabel Figworthy's January Square for her Songs of the Weather stitch along. Now my plan for these designs is, I don't have to have to finish them in any way, but what I want to do is each month choose threads um, that tie in with the colours I see for that month. So obviously, you know, summer will be warm, bright colours, winter, cold colours. You see where I'm going with this. So for January, the, I've already, I had previously already stitched this square back in 2003. But I chose to stitch it up in blues, so this is my little Pardanger square. Basically, when Mabel designed this stitch along, she did it for the Hardanger beginner. So January is is very simple. It's basically for anybody that hasn't done Hardanger, is to get them used to, to counting, um, to stitching the cloister blocks, which are for any of you that don't know, see these little sort of rectangles. They're cloister blocks, and all they are basically is satin stitches. It's just five satin, five satin stitches stitched over four threads. Um, obviously, in different designs, um, they can be of different sizes, but generally, that's what cloister blocks are. So it's get you used to stitching them and the process of stitching them, and also stitching sort of the satin motifs. They're there, they are the foundations of hard anger really, the satin motifs and the cloister blocks. So it's just get to get you used to stitching that way. So that's why it's quite a simple design. No cut work involved. Cut work starts um, from next month, February. So I just stitched it up in um, DM, mostly DMC actually. So it's DMC number 5 and number 8 and stranded cotton. Those little squares, you probably can't see them very well, but they're actually little herringbone squares. And then you've got obviously the lazy daisies. Um, and I chose to do French knots. And the pattern, it was colonial knots, but French, you know, French knots. So I just did those instead. They're usually, well, they are kind of interchangeable really. It's very hard to tell by looking at them. The way you stitch them is different. But the finish, they look almost identical. So I chose to do them. The only the fancy thread that I use, which gets to count towards my thread pawn totals, or oh, fancy, it's hand dyed, that's all, is a, is a hand dyed pearl by um, Steph Francis. So I use that one in the centre motifs there. Very pretty and lovely and easy to use. And the other thing I just thought I'd mention in case anybody cares is. Um, on Instagram I put up this picture of my, this is my number 5 um, DMC thread and I I clap them like that so you've got the the um, skein label at the top and that way um, they will stay together and you don't lose the label. Um, if anybody wants to know how or why you could do that I'll put a link to the um, article by Mary Corbett below. Uh, anything that I mention basically links will be below, they're always below. So that's my little ease into hard anger at the start of the year. That's that one. It only took a sort of evening to stitch, really. Now, my other projects are my Phoebe designs. These are four little charts that I've had in my stash for, I don't know, three or four years. And I've seen various stitches stitch them up. You'll rec probably recognise them straight away. And I, I thought, mm, oh, I'd love to stitch those. They're so sweet. They're such cute designs. And I never did. So I knew my first project for thread porn would be these trees. And also I like trees and seasonal things, so it kind of fitted in with that. So um, these are the Jardin Privé Freebie seasonal trees. 
Um, I will obviously link below to the um, website. They've got all sorts of different freebies on there that you can download should you choose to do so. So I decided for these trees what I would do is all the threads uh, I chose were mohs silks. I decided to stitch them with mohs silks and where necessary for an added sparkly accent. I used um, Rainbow Gallery, either Petite Treasure Braid or Petite Silk Lamy Braid. And I put all my threads that I was using in this bag. So I'm not going to tell you exactly how many threads I used because then you'll be able to work out how many threads I have. But, you know, there's quite a ton of um, Fosway bags in there. So quite a few threads were used in the making of these little finishes. So let's start with the first one, Spring. So. I finish them just in a very simple little pillow, nothing fancy, you know, we'll get to that as time moves on. So, um, yeah, so these are all stitched in silk and then here you can see I used a um, metallic little accent there for the little tulip. But, yeah, that's that one. And there's Summer. Beautiful um, silk there for the apples, I can't remember exactly, oh, Catching Fire was the name of the silk for that one. And then I did the basket in gold metallic and the little bird that's in the metallic as well, though you probably can't see it very well. Incidentally, the fabric that I use for these are all um, hand dyed fabrics from various people, um, 28 count. I think the spring one, that's a Jobalan from Pole Stitches. Summer is um, a Lugana from Sugar Maple Fabrics, who are now no longer with us. And here's the one I did for Autumn, that's a Silk Weaver solo, um, yeah, Lugana. And this one I did the Squirrel in, a, I think that was Autumn Leaves, um, Petite Treasure Braid and the Acorns. Um, yeah, so that's that one, goldish fabric on the back. And then this one is the Winter. And for this one, I don't have any of Moe's white silk, so what I used for the snowman is um, Rainbow Gallery Petite Silk Lame Braid in, well, white, I would assume. I think, yeah, I think, actually, I think it was white, it didn't have a fancy name, it was just white. And the main, the tree for this one, I used um, John Bates silk from Mo, And you can, yeah. You can see again. I used the red up there for the robin, and I think I used yeah some more treasure braid for the little birds, and then all of them. I just finished off all of these fabrics are what what was in my fabric stash, and I just sort of matched as best I could what I had because I didn't really want to necessarily start stashing on new fabrics just yet. I just I like to use what I have, and then I just found little trims and bits and pieces just to add some sort of interest at the bottom. So those were my my little finishes for the pool. And I, to be honest, I really enjoyed making these. And if I'm going to be brutally honest, I enjoyed stitching the whole process of kitting up, stitching, you know, finishing. I enjoyed that much more than I did stitching on my Mirabilia this month. But I will go on to talk about that in another video. This is just for thread porn. Just to introduce thread porn and to show you what I've been up to for thread porn this month in January. So after all of that I can tell you how much of my stash that I used this month. And I've realised that I've actually forgotten to write it down. So if you bear with me a second, I will tell you how much it is. Initially, um, I know I was um, emailing Mackenzie and I told her the amount that I had, but what I'd forgotten to do was add in the threads that I'd bought this month. So, I think can I see what I'm looking for on here? No. Oh. Sorry. My apps are on a different place on my iPad to what they are on my iPod. I was looking in the wrong place for it. 
you're going to be very disappointed now when I tell you the exact total after waiting all this time to get what it is. So I think I know what it is, but you know, accuracy is important to me, so I have to give you the exact figures. This is the other reason why I keep um, my inventory, my stash inventory on an Excel spreadsheet because I keep it in Dropbox which means that I can access it from any of my devices. I've got it as a favourite so I don't necessarily need to have it on Wi-Fi to be able to download my stitching spreadsheet. So, when it finally loads it up, I can tell you. Thread totals. Yes, that's what I thought it was. So, the grand total, after all of that, the grand total number of percentage of my threads I have used <laughs> is 1.59%. Now, everybody's got to start somewhere, and to be honest, you know, 1.5% month by month I will reach my 15% total but you know it wasn't just one or two threads that I used overall this month and remember that it's not just I'm not just counting the threads I use for my specific thread porn projects it's across all the stitching that I do all the different projects that I've got so 1.59% this month I thought was actually quite good as a starting point I will um, I've obviously got um, other things that I've been stitching this month and I will update you on the progress on that in a whip update video. Um, but as I say, this one was just for my thread pool. So, um, there you go. It's quite weird making a video after you haven't made one for a while. It's quite hard to get back into doing. But I shall endeavour to try, even if it's only to do a little thread pool report each month, there will always be at least one video a month on my channel. Anything more than that I can't necessarily stake my life on. I have a few other plans which I will talk about in my whip update video for January. And um, to, so that you know what's going on with me and my channel. So, there you go. That's my update on thread porn. Um, thank you to all the people that have messaged me and emailed me while I have been on hiatus. And asking me, oh, when's your next video? And you know, what are you doing with red porn and all those sort of things. So, thank you to all of you um, for getting me to make another video. <laughs> I shall be back with my whip update video shortly. So, thank you for watching. Um, please feel free, you know, leave comments, even if it's not necessarily related. If you've got a question or a query, you've seen something in one of my other videos. It doesn't really matter if it's not related, if the question isn't related to the topic of the video. You know, lots of people message me different questions or ask me different things on, on any of my videos. Especially um, the new subscribers that I've had. Even though I haven't made a video for two months, I've still had a lot of interest on my channels and people still making comments and things. So thank you for that. That's um, really, uh, really nice of you to still take an interest and be interested in what I'm up to. So, there we go. So that's all for me from this video, so I'll say thanks for watching and happy stitching. <laughs>